thought it was really interesting how you brought magic and science together in a way that we usually don't see you know here in the modern world mm -hmm. and it almost made me instantly think of arthur c clark's third law any mm -hmm. sufficiently advanced science would appear to be magic and that seemed to fit in, fit in so great with your movie did you guys think about that at all i did actually that? and I, I i thought about that a lot and i i you know, one of the uh, caveats with that that I think about is how I believe science fiction precedes science. That scientists are sort of doing their work in the wake of, of the wave parted by science fiction. That science fiction takes on the imagination and science mm -hmm. takes on the application um, of it. I really love the idea in this film and it's the fact that Dave is a physicist and studying physics that they're really related and that I wanted to know whatever magic we were doing, what the science of that magic would be. We talk about it in the film, we allude to it. You can't get too in-depth or else it becomes a little bit of a different movie, but it's all there. Tell me, when you remade the Fantasia sequence with the dancing broomsticks and everything, mm -hmm. how did you attack that being such a classic scene that we all grew up with? And you know, it started with research. I, we, you know, we all watched it a lot. I, and I would watch it a lot with the cinematographer. I watched a lot with the composer. I watched it a lot with the visual effects people. Because we wanted to understand the character of the whole piece. Mm -hmm. What is it they did so well? Why are we loving this? Let's really analyze it. What did they do? And then say, okay, if we're doing this, and we're doing it not just because it's a good idea, but because that specific piece, Sorcerer's Apprentice from Fantasia, is so awesome. What can we do like them? How can we shoot it like they did? Mm. What kind of shots can I get? What kind of angles? How can I use shadows the way they did? Um, music, how do we let music drive certain parts of this? Now, we don't have the luxury of letting the music exist and then we just animate to the music. We gotta do our movie and then bring the music in mm -hmm. seconds, the way it's just the reality of it. But you must integrate the music, it's so important. And how can we use it in that sense? So there was just a lot of work and a lot of conversations that went into that. The next step was to design a sequence that, first of all, belonged in the movie, that it was right for this story and affected the story, or mm -hmm. else it's just, oh, it's look at that little cute scene. God. Um, it's gotta be integral to what happens. After that, we then looked at all the little bits and things available to us with the sets, the props, and all that, and find the best way to do the, the effects pra with practical effects. You know. After talking about it, they hadn't realized that I intended the set to be filled with water. <laughs> and I said, it's the Sorcerer's Apprentice. It's right, water. Right, and right. It wasn't that. I said, no, no, no. They had to, re they had to put <laughs> drainage and plumbing and water and the whole thing out. Oh, it was horrible. I guess I should have mentioned it a little sooner. Um, but real water, getting people out there in green suits with real mops and brooms to slush the water and all that made all the difference. And especially the electrical outlets, that kind of brought it up to date. Did you like that? You're the only person who's Absolutely. mentioned them. Oh, was, thank goodness. Because they were worried that you know, everyone was going to get electrocuted because the water was getting higher and higher for a minute. A little danger. And, and I, I don't know, maybe it's a, a brain problem I have, but I've always seen little electrical outlets looking like two eyes little, and a mouth. Little faces, like little yeah. Face. <laughs> and so in this one, why not? Let them come to life and, and, and talk a bit. In the end of the movie, uh, science ultimately defeats magic with the use of the Tesla coil. How did you guys decide to use that? To... You know, it was a really interesting choice of that Dave had to find science as his trick because what it meant was it was really Dave and who Dave was, mm -hmm. who this character is. That's the most important thing. His own uh, innovation, his own uh, imagination is what was the most important thing. Um, but bringing in the Tesla coils and Tesla, who was a bit of a sorcerer uh, mm. in, of his own generation, um, the power of the Tesla coils, finding out, you know, seeing online how the Tesla coil is looking, clicking, and how they can make them play music. Wow, great idea. That's got to be, you know, you know, base everything on what's real, and it'll make the movie real. You know? And you'll see a lot of directors uh, are very hung up on that. It's very important. With all the make-believe, you have to start with what's true because the audience can quickly tell when you're lying to them, when you're making something up just because it's convenient to you. Right. You better base it in science. Spielberg does it. Cameron is phenomenal at it. And he, that's why his movies work so One of the reasons his movies work so well. Well, you did a great job on this one. Thanks. We loved it. Thank you very much, well, John. Thank you so much.